Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, great, great evening here, and thank you so much to each and every one of you joining us here today. Uh, before we start off with the webinar today, which is titled "Upgrade Buildings to Enhance Occupant Safety and Wellbeing," uh, and with the stellar lineup of speakers that we have, I'm just going to give you some basic points about uh, the uh, webinar interface. So uh, we. Uh, especially for the audience joining us uh, for the questions that you would have for the speakers through the uh, course of the panel discussion and the webinar request you all to please drop in your questions in the Q&A tab. I'm repeating there is a particular tab called the Q&A tab request you to please drop in your questions on that. If you all have the questions uh, directed towards specific speakers, please do mention we would take it up with them directly. So uh, this would be it from my end, and I'm going to quickly uh, pass this on uh, to uh, Bivor Shrivastav, who is the MD for uh, ITP Media India. Uh, Bivor, over to you. Well, Rashmi, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A big hello to everyone. Uh, as we can see, with the pandemic still causing persistent impacts, the stakes are at an all-time high for commercial infrastructures and the health and marketability of several buildings entirely depend upon meeting occupant expectations to attract tenants. Digitization is the most plausible solution to create people-centric infrastructures that are designed for occupant wellness and health. Commercial real estate owners need to deliver an enhanced sense of security beyond safety and well-being to provide environments that are healthy and keep people informed. At the same time, they need to create a collaborative environment that is productive and sustainable to ensure operations are managed effectively. This is brought to the need of deploying IoT-based or smart technologies in order to achieve these goals. These technologies include benchmark control, access control, security, and surveillance system, lighting controls, energy management, and host of among, among others. In this webinar, we have experts to dwell into these very technologies. So without any further ado, I shall quickly introduce our esteemed speakers. Shubhrata K. C. Sharma, Chief Operating Officer, Commercial Bigger Enterprise. With over 25 years experience in reality and retail, Shubhrata joined BL in July 2018, just when the company was embarking on its next phase of growth. Prior to joining BL, Shubhrata was a vice president and head of Ascendar Sinbridge Hyderabad operation. He was actively involved in senior management assignment with full scope PLL responsibility of over 3.6 million square feet commercial office portfolio. He was instrumental in synergizing capabilities across large operations and manpower teams to significantly improve cost and operational efficiency. He has in the past been associated with leading organizations like Hindustan Petroleum, Vasatin Housing, Knight Frank, and Indo Projects. Next, we have Rajat Malhotra, Executive Director, Head of Engineering Air Operations, OTAC, Jones Lang Lassal, JLL Nasramin. I love to call it Rajat every now and then. He brought along nearly 30 years of experience in the engineering operations and technology. Currently, Rajat oversees the business infrastructure function and leads the SME platform for the IMF operation. He is deeply interested in the transformation of workspaces enabled by technology, and his current focus area is around the health tech in the entire real estate life cycle, enabling workspaces and work environments in of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now Surain Kumar, Assistant Vice President, MEP Brookfield Properties. With a career spanning over 25 years, Surin Kumar is one of the foremost industry experts on understanding how companies can reduce the carbon footprint. Prior to joining Brookfield, he has worked alongside several marketing companies such as DLF, Bharti Reality, MR, MGF, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, very outstanding personality, Vivian Moza, Executive Director and Head of Project Management Services, Nightfrank. As part of the India Leadership Team, is involved in making key decisions and policies. His role is to provide strategic direction based on the knowledge of operating business issues, competitive analysis, and broader market research data to drive competitive advantage and retain the company's position as the market leader. Debain's role 
has just a significant international dimension in referring businesses to other regions and as a key member of the project management global business development team. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled to bring to you our lead moderator for the evening, Shweta Shah. The current role at Sidel Electric, Shweta has the building segment and strategic technologies of energy management and automation and create a hyper efficient, resilient, and more, more importantly, an energy sustainable ecosystem. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, I would like to welcome all of you in the audience for a great and a very insightful discussion as it unfolds. Shweta, over to you. Thank you, Vipor. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. I'm really humbled. So, so a very good evening to all the audience and a very warm welcome to all the panelists. We have a very strong, very, uh, very experienced panelist with us today. And I'm really um, grateful that I get, a, get to ask questions to the esteemed panelists today. Right. So commercial real estate uh, has been undergoing a transformation in last several years. Uh, initially, it was all about bringing the cost down, creating very appealing space and creating energy efficient infrastructures. But over the last two years, uh, things have changed. The developers, the occupants, the uh, operators are now talking about health and safety aspects more and more. Now we see many corporates are getting used to the new normal. They are bringing back their employees very safely, very thoughtfully back to the workplace. And that has made the whole topic around the well-being and health and safety much more um, interactive, basically. Now with this, I also feel the sustainability has been, uh, it has been a buzzword, but then of late, the buzz around sustainability has increased drastically. Uh, many of us must be aware, uh, you know, the buildings consume almost 40% of the total global energy and it emits almost one third of the total greenhouse gas emissions. So you see there is a huge scope, huge scope with the developers, operators and even occupants of the building to reduce, to minimize these energy related e emissions and to become more carbon negative. Now, with these um, social, economic, and environmental challenge around us, it is the need of the art today that we start talking about transforming the buildings, buildings which are new, buildings which are old. The whole idea is to create a healthy building. Um, in today's session, we are uh, talking about how, how is technology helping upgrade the buildings, which is adding on to the health and safety aspects of the occupants of the tenants. With this, without spending more time, I will move on to the panel discussion. And I open the panel discussion with my first question to Rajat. Yeah. So Rajat, my first question is to you. Um, you handle an important portfolio and you oversee many important critical functions at JLL. You oversee the sustainability, the engineering and the operations. Now, in your experience in last two years, what do you think has been some of the key trends with respect to the safety which your tenants are asking more and more these days? And um, also, which of these trends you think are here to stay? Over to you, Thank Rajan. you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Shweta. I hope my audio is coming across uh, clearly. Um, so, um, I think uh, Shweta, fantastic, uh, fantastic question, and thank you so much to the ITP Media and Schneider Electric for setting up a panel on something as important as relevant uh, as this topic um, today. I think the key trends, Shweta, are more uh, holistic. Uh, safety is an integral component, as you said, of the well-being and the resilience of the buildings themselves, right? So safety is an integral component of the well-being of the occupants and the resilience of the buildings itself. So we are talking of safety of employees and then also safety and uptime of the buildings. Uh, so building tenants are demanding or expecting safety measures uh, for personnel and also uh, they are demanding of landlords that they underwrite the safety, resilience, and uptime 
of the building infrastructure itself, right? These are very challenging times. Uh, we've had uh, during the second wave uh, in the most severest of lockdowns, uh, we've been finding it very challenging to get our staff and manpower across to buildings also to operate critical infrastructure. So in such environments, in such conditions, in such a business environment, how do you actually guarantee resilience and uptime of the building to the occupants, right? So there's that element. So I think um, while we've seen touchless uh, and screening uh, evolve over a period of time and screening, you know, if you look at screening, the screening also, as far as um, the digitization of uh, the screening process is concerned, has also come a long way, right? Uh, we used to initially do only thermal screening and now it's very different, right? It's screening for vaccinations, for example, right? Uh, it's screening also for um, yeah, for RT-PCR testing or for the testing because we know that the latest variant does not always manifest itself as high temperature. So I think um, the expectations of occupants have also evolved with, um, you know, I'm not making uh, light of this, but with the, uh, with the various variants uh, of this virus as well. So we are looking at digitization for safety and well-being, and we are looking at digitization for the resilience of the building itself. So you look at uh, ventilation systems, uh, especially in landlord uh, areas, which are, you know, you're saying uh, entrance lobbies, uh, lift lobbies, elevators themselves, uh, staircase landings, uh, the requirements for ventilation and bringing in fresh air changes is so very important, right? So um, the occupants are asking for technological interventions to ensure that that air itself is sanitized, right? Do we have, for example, UV interventions uh, to, to ensure that the viral load in the air is reduced to the minimum? Touchless, of course, uh, there's a lot which has been spoken about. And now the other bit which I said, talked about safety of the building infrastructure itself or the resilience of the building infrastructure, and that's where what Vibor and you have been speaking about, IoT plays a huge role, right? So Schneider, you yourself have a fantastic platform called EcoStructure, which looks at not only well-being, but it also looks at the resilience of uh, the buildings themselves, right? So you're looking at how I'm going to monitor buildings remotely and still guarantee the uptime of building infrastructure to the occupants, right? So you are saying that I'm operating the building, operating it safely for the occupants, and then I'm also ensuring that you're providing an indoor environment which is safe for the occupants and tenants. So there are these elements of uh, technology which are getting applied in the in the buildings, the well-being of the occupants, and also the safety and resilience of the buildings themselves. Back to you, Shweta. I think you may be on mute, Shweta. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that. So very, very important point you highlighted, Rajat. It is not only, it is certainly the, the safety and the health of the occupant is certainly the most important thing, but, is, but what is also important is the health of the building. So till the time you have a healthy infrastructure, you have a technology which is enabling the health of the infrastructure, you cannot think about keeping the occupants healthy. Very interesting point on that, yeah. With this, I will move on. I'll come back to you, Rajat, uh, in a while, and I move on to the next panelist. Meanwhile, so my next question is to you, Surinder. Yeah. So um, uh, we all know Brookfield has been, um, you know, has been on a, a expansion spree in India uh, with respect to the commercial real estate in India, right? Yes. So, uh, what are some of those key technologies which you are incorporating in your building and in your new campuses, which is ensuring the safety and um, well-being again of the occupants of the tenants? Okay, uh, right. First of all, uh, Shweta, thanks Schneider and uh, ITP. They had given me this opportunity. So let's uh, come on the quickly your point that. Uh, you know, key technology. As a Brookfield, we are committed to, first of all, after a pandemic, even before that, the quality of the air, right? Health is more important for the, uh, you know, our tenant and personal level. So we are more, uh, for our more focused on the uh, air quality. So to how to improve the air quality, which is you know, more important for us. So even, uh, we are now, we are using even uh, the MOV 14 filters, right? Normally, even the ASHRAE over the COVID, uh, they are recommended the MOV 
13 but we immediately went to on the mop 14 filter those are the esp filter e1 right one is the good and the second uh you know which controls this uh pm 2.5 and those efficiencies are even in the pm 2.5 to uh, 3 is uh, about 99 percent so uh, that is the first thing which uh, which is the new technology because it's a new normal and the people should be confident when they come and then, then they have an, a confidence that the building is safe for us. So for that even we had started in our all these lobbies, you know, and when enter into any building in the lobbies, so we have an a, a indoor air quality monitoring. Right, so that the people would understand this is the IQ level in the building where you are sitting, where you have to sit at the 10, 12 hours. So the people should feel comfort level and they should feel proud. Ki, yes, these are the these are the safety. And in fact, uh, you know, we have uh, we had started the UV also as per the ISHRAE guidelines also. Right, and the one more key is the demand ventilation control. Demand ventilation, you know, the fresh air is a major important role when you uh, are in the COVID. Generally, as per Ashray, people use and we are also using earlier, but now we had started to design our all the buildings even in the 30% extra, right? Which gives more and more fresh air to the building. And it has to be automatically based on the BMS. This is the new, uh, you know, the demand maintain so that whenever we, and we always try to maintain the CO2 level in the office area ambient plus 350 which is an, one of the good, uh, you know, this is the class A building, we can say. And these these are the things which we were working, even not the, you know, the uh, normal, new normal, even before that we were working on it. But after that, our management took the decision, no. The first, the important thing to our client is their health, right? For that, the air quality is one of the most key, uh, uh, we can say the key point for that all display all these these things fresh airs we have even hrws and all this thing even with the uvga so these are the key points which we are we had already adopted for our uh, even all the buildings even in the old building also even which we are acquiring you know the and, and we had started the retrofitting kinds of these things so these th these are the main things which we are uh, doing in this Sorry, you are on mute, mute. I think I'm automatically going on mute. <laughs> right. So they want panelists to speak more than I do. <laughs> no. So, so yes, so some very important point which you highlighted, Surinder, I, I completely agree with you. Air quality, IAQ, indoor air quality has been a major, major point to work upon since the pandemic has started since this is all about airborne um, uh, infection, so people are more worried about it. Technology is helping us, um, you know, in that game. And uh, one interesting point, what I liked is upgrading the old building. So as Brookfield is in the journey of acquiring old assets, I, I hear that we are also upgrading the old assets to compete with the new assets as well. And yes. then making them healthy as well, right? Yes, so that, yes. That's that's a very uh, good point. So I will move on, um, considering the time, um, you know, uh, I will move on. So my third question uh, is to uh, Devan Yu. Um, so Devan, you have a vast experience in the sector and then in the multiple business functions and you've handled some of the very, very successful projects in your career span, long career span. So we want to hear from you your views on how um, AI, artificial intelligence and um, data-driven models are reshaping the future of uh, real estate. And with respect to um, the infrastructure, which is healthy, which is safe, which is also the demand of the time. Over to you, Devan. Um, thanks, uh, Shweta. And, uh... Thank you for having me on the panel. Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, you know, uh, today's real estate projects uh, use artificial in intelligence to offer a health focused solution. You know, there are three, three uh, main elements to it, safety, data driven comfort and sustainability. Uh, Rajat spoke about it, Surendra spoke about it. I think the, the safety is the most uh, basic principle of well-being. Uh, you, with with the fear of COVID and 
you know, a couple of my uh, fellow panelists are still working from home. There's a fear of getting into the building. So how do we do that? And Surinder touched upon, you know, air quality changes, and you know, we use uh, uh, different technologies to, to uh, you know, enhance the the system. So what we're talking about out here is how we we can you know make buildings safe, you know, existing buildings as well as the new builds. So what we're talking about. And AI is still at very infancy stage in, in India. We we haven't mastered it. We're still learning it. And I believe, you know, with with COVID, uh, it has actually fast-tracked the application or use of AI in construction. So when we, we talk about, you know, we talk about building occupants, we talk about how they would use AI in terms of facial rec recognition or in terms of you know touchless surfaces in in in, in the buildings to to move around, and how it would help in in this, not only the occupants but the visitors who are visiting the building. So I think going forward, uh, uh, this uh, these elements would play a major role. Now then we come to data driven comfort. Uh, with with IoT and which Rajat also spoke about, you know, we're talking about how building would function in terms of, uh, you know, taking into consideration the the comfort of the individuals who are occupying it. So everybody would have different, you know, thermal res comfort levels. So you have sensor based equipment which you use, and how you can you know minimize the the energy consumption and as you said 40% of the energy is being used in the buildings so how do we use that so so we come to sustainability part so sustainability now you know everybody used to talk about sustainability now esg has become a, a you know focus for everybody so that's where we 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 talk about how better we can use uh, you know if, improve the efficiency of the building so AI based energy management system can identify thermal fluctuations in the rooms and where pre cooling is required and where the cooling is not required. Similarly for lighting. So it's, it's not just limited to AC or HVAC or lighting. It is also in terms of, uh, you know, other functions related to the occupancy. So building occupants now, are, if they reoccupy the offices, which we were predicting when in January people would start coming back to offices. Now it's taken a hit. So maybe four months down the line, we'll see some movement there. So they are looking at future ready facilities. And the te and technology is going to play a very big and vital role in giving that comfort for people to come to office and feel safe. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Devin, for uh, those very important points when you touched upon AI. And it's it's very true. I, I do believe that um, in India, we are still at an infant stage. The capability of AI, the capability of technologies like, you know, digital twin is something which is often spoken about when we talk about, um, you know, technology in buildings. These are some of the technologies which can do much more in terms of helping the developers and the operators reach the efficiency level they desire to. So that is one very good point. Future ready infrastructure, future ready facility, which you spoke about, is certainly, certainly is what most of the occupants are asking. So, so very important points you have thrown light on. And I will come back to you for uh, the next question. Meanwhile, I'll move on to Shubrata to you. And my question to you is more on the return to the work, related to return to the work. So Brigid already has, um, you know, some of the iconic, some of the landmark uh, buildings, commercial buildings into its portfolio. And Brigid already hold a very, very strong uh, base um, of tenants, uh, global tenants with it. So how are the uh, how are the uh, CRE owners, uh, commercial real estate owners like Brigid, 
is using technology to transform the buildings, to upgrade the buildings so that they can give the confidence to their employee, to their occupants and tenants to come back safely, you know, back to the work, return to the work. So over to you, uh, Shukrat. Yeah, thank you, Swetha. So uh, as I was hearing Devin, Surinder and Rajat, uh, see, everything is kind of like interlinked and, and, and the way that we are seeing the real estate industry like maturing at, at, a, at a very fast rate in terms of like adoption of technology, etc. At Brigade also, we have seen the same thing and, and, and in Brigade, uh, what we have done differently is we also have a real estate a real estate accelerator program okay in that we actually nurture and mentor startups who are into uh, who are into providing innovative solutions particularly towards real estate challenges okay and they are majorly like very passionate companies and as on date uh, as we speak uh, we would have uh, evaluated almost 2500 plus applications and we have mentored 46 companies okay so one is uh, because of this COVID onset, a lot of things got accelerated. And in terms of like, if you, if you ask me, like as, as Surinder rightly said, okay, air quality is something that has become the need of the hour, okay, unless and until you actually give the confidence to your tenants that air quality is something that is very safe, okay, to come back. Okay, uh, so they won't be motivated. So as far as the premises are concerned, there are two aspects to it. One is, how motivated they are come to your uh, come back to your premises the second is how safe your premises are now in terms of motivation there are various other aspects like what kind of amenities and how are you actually managing your common areas but in terms of safety air quality is something which has become uh, a need of the hour and uh, we have we have a startup with us a clear co who actually we mentored and they are doing a fabulous job and we have actually uh, uh, given them the spaces, like all the common areas are now being actually uh, maintained by them and uh, uh, that is helping us actually maintain the air quality. Uh, apart from that, we have also uh, changed the filters like MERV 13, what I was like glad to hear from Surinder that they have now upgraded uh, their filters to MERV 14. So as I said, industry is evolving very fast, okay. And we at Brigade, uh, because of all these startup tie-ups, uh, we are actually seeing a lot many changes come very fast. Okay, like we have a SAN IoT. They are into uh, IoT-based sanitization service provider. So that is data-driven. Okay, so there are many other companies like that. Uh, all other things such as like your thermal screening, okay, like Psycho can or UV laser system, all these are something that are non-negotiable. So we are also trying to upgrade ourselves very fast to give the confidence to the tenants to come back to our premises. So that is where we stand now and we are evolving. Great, great. Good to hear, good to hear. And I think uh, one of the key points uh, what you mentioned about is, you know, uh, tying up with the startups. This point is, um, you know, it, it's something which is like very, very, uh, important and it is giving more and more opportunity to the startups as well. So it's like, you know, both the sides. Yes. And uh, yeah, certainly, I mean, that's something which is like certainly encouraged and, uh, you know, well appreciated. So, so good points from your side, Shubrat. I'll come back to you again with a second question. Uh, meanwhile, we will move on to next set of questions, which is on the theme of sustainability and efficiency. So we spoke about digitization, we spoke about technology, how it is helping creating a more safe, more healthy place. Now let's talk about efficiency and sustainability because I feel sustainability is here to stay. That is the need of our, we all as an individual or as an organization, we all have responsibility to give back to environment. So it becomes a very important topic, even for real estate. Now, my next question is back to you, uh, Rajat. Now, pandemic has changed the way facility operations are being handled. Uh, what are those changes, some of those changes, which has actually made positive impact on overall efficiency and even help us achieve the sustainability KPIs? So some of those changes, yeah. Over to uh, you. Sure, yeah. Thanks so much for the question, uh, Shweta. And 
very relevant and all of the you know, eminent co panelists have uh, have actually alluded to the importance of sustainability and so have you. So if you look at the current business environment for real estate or facility operations, uh, Shweta, uh, investors and shareholders are increasingly asking for greater transparency about environmental, social, governance, performance of portfolios. And uh, Devin spoke about ESG, but let me expand this a bit more. Now the emphasis is on performance. Right? So, which means that facility operations becomes that much more relevant because the emphasis is on performance and data transparency. So, regulators today are mandating even more ESG disclosures uh, and improvements within buildings. And I think obviously uh, tenants, owners, all other stakeholders in the real estate domain are demanding more sustainable uh, buildings and infrastructure. Now, as the importance of ESG in the real estate sector increases, um, people are moving from more a project-based to a portfolio-based approach when it comes to sustainability, right? Uh, and becoming more transparent uh, than ever before regarding their own ESG performance. Because a lot of our clients uh, and we ourselves have our own SBTI goals, right? So we've got sustainability uh, commitments and sustainability targets, which we have declared publicly to shareholders. And uh, a lot of our clients have done that as well. Now, when these targets and goals have been declared transparently to shareholders, the reporting of performance in compliance to these targets and goals becomes that much more important. So therefore, facility operations is now going not much beyond just energy, right? We are tracking, for example, waste. We are tracking um, compliance to our clients or our own SPTI targets, right? So that's the shift that is happening in, in facility operations, right? Um, ESG compliance itself is a huge shift uh, for us, especially in, in today's business environment. I'll give you some very interesting metrics. When you look at Gresby, and Gresby is a global um, real estate uh, sustainability benchmark, and it's a global, reporting right. platform, the number of assessments under GRESB have gone up by 20 to 25% in the last two years, which is a significant rise, right? And if you look at just the amount of asset performance, which is being reported at an asset level, that has gone up. And today we have more than 200,000 assets where asset level performance is being reported. And it could be compliance to SBTIs or compliance to any global sustainability targets, which clients or, you know, a lot of the uh, attendees to this session have committed uh, to their shareholders. So the focus is on sustain or is on facility operations. How do I manage energy? How do I monitor? How do I track? How do I conserve? And most importantly, how am I reporting it transparently? And how genuine is my reporting? That's where technology is coming into the play, right? Uh, Technology makes and underwrites how genuine your reporting is right? because that's all verifiable. So reporting energy performance, reporting waste performance, overall ESG performance is becoming super, super important. So I think there's a huge focus in, uh, in facility operations in this domain focused around ESG compliance or SBTI compliance, whatever is relevant as far as our clients are concerned. You know, we ourselves have uh, declared our own SPTIs, as I said, uh, as JLL. What's the other bit, which is a trend which is driving, is this whole increase in demand for net zero. Uh, and you're seeing a lot of our own clients uh, have declared net zero targets. And they said, we'll go net zero, for example. We have said, we'll go net zero by 2030. And we have then gone ahead and said, we'll go net zero on behalf of our clients, including scope three emissions by 2040. So that means the buildings that we operate will also operate on zero emission uh, norms and standards. So I think these are huge commitments that we are making. And let me tell you, the timeline may appear to us as dilated, but two decades will pass like this. So therefore, facility operations is becoming super, super important. When you're talking of net zero, it's about 90% of a building life is operations of that building, right? So you have to ensure that you're operating the building sustainably. sustainably. And if there are any, if there are any, um, if there are any carbon, if there is a carbon consumption, 
then you're offsetting that carbon consumption as well, right? You may be, for example, procuring 90% of your energy through renewable means, and that is all done by facility operations, but that 10% then has to be offset as well. So there are mechanisms now which are, which are in place for us to offset uh, the carbon emissions of buildings, which are not accounted for by just renewable energy uh, sourcing. So such a huge focus on sustainability. We are, for us, a lot of our clients, and I'm seeing that happening across the real estate sector, it's a very, very good trend. What I feel uh, in India, we will see greater regulatory activity in this domain as well, especially around energy and performance reporting. And once that is made mandatory, then that data transparency and the how genuinely that performance is being reported will come under the scanner. And this is only a matter of time, Shweta. We've seen, we have declared as a country in COP26, Prime Minister Modi has said, as a country, we have declared net zero by 2070. That's a huge, huge commitment to make, right? And therefore, obviously, the government is going to become more and more active. And we'll see greater regulations. And for us as building operators, that augurs very well, because I think we are well prepared. Uh, and our facility operations is now hugely focused around ESG, compliance and ensuring net zero uh, performance as well. Back to you, Shweta. Great, very, very um, strong insights. And, and, and I could see the passion with which you were mentioning about the kind of efforts, the kind of steps uh, you, know, you and your team at JLL, at your client's place, you have been taken. So, so great um, ESG, certainly it is important today, but then it is going to get more and more important with the performance and the data transparency coming in and becoming more important in terms of reporting the performance of ESG KPIs. Things will fall, fall into the places the way we are looking forward to. So, so uh, 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 great insight. I can't, I'm a lot to take from you, uh, Rajat, on this point, I think, personally for myself also, good. Mm -hmm. So I will move on quickly to you, Shubhrat, uh, um, uh, question on sustainability again. Um, uh, since you have a huge base of tenant, uh, you know, corporate IT, uh, global IT firms, and um, you have been interacting with your tenants very regularly. So tell me this, from the uh, building owner perspective or the investor perspective, is sustainability really impacting the value of the asset, the total overall value of the asset today? And if it is yes, um, so how do you think it is impacting? Uh, I see it's indeed impacting the value of the building. And, and, and of late, what we are seeing, like apart from the tenants that we already have, uh, we are actually seeing a quite a good amount of cultural shift among them, okay, how they conduct their own businesses. In fact, many of the tenants we are seeing that internally also, they are actually reorganizing things to actually uh, become more compliant with the ESG standards. And so far as the new new requirements are concerned, uh, we are seeing like questions are now being asked, okay, like they are doing a positive screening, whether the developer meets their ESG standard norms. Okay, Now that uh, that being said, uh, we we already had the culture like we we internally are a company who are very focused in terms of like how we design our properties like in terms of designing uh, when we see like we are very focused in how we replant the trees. In fact, in two of the properties recently, when we actually went ahead with the development, we replanted almost 213 trees in one of the property and 600 approximately trees in the other property. Okay, so that that's a culture of ours. Now. Uh, those are one aspect to it, like how you actually develop your landscapes, etc. And as I as I said, that we also are partnering with various other startups who are actually very innovative uh, uh, in, in in various aspects, like be it like safety, be it uh, ESG. So we have identified two more companies who are actually partnering with us. Particularly, uh, if I were to name them, one is uh, Eco STP, who are into gravity based uh, STP solution. And the other one is we got okay. They are actually into water monitoring system, and we 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 have gotten the data from them that uh, based upon their system and based upon the data, they are achieving almost 25 to 30 percent of water savings. Okay. Now one um, is like how you save. Okay, that actually brings in more operational efficiency how you conduct your business. And second is it also demonstrates how responsible you are uh, towards all these ESG standards. Okay. 
So uh, we are also evolving, as I said, and we are also experimenting with various companies, uh, but we are very mindful that uh, we will actually go on deploying these uh, initiatives, okay, uh, particularly to give that operational efficiency to the tenants that are housed in our building. So basically, that's the whole culture of ours. And we are, uh, uh, see, I have only named two or three of them, but there are many other companies who are actually being very creative and very passionate about bringing in the changes. And as you, as you asked, uh, is it impacting? It certainly is impacting. And going forward, it will be a, a major screening criteria. Okay, okay. So, so nice, um, uh, good. Uh, what I understood from you, yes, it is increasing the value of the assets. Yes. Your clients or the occupants, tenants are looking for these factors, especially the ESG compliances and the activities around the ESG being integrated in the building is very important today. And yes, we all are evolving and, um, you know, the, the, the path is very long and we have just started the journey. So uh, good, good insight. Thank you for that insight, Shubhrat. And um, I will move on to the next question to surrender to you. Um, so in, in your experience, in fact, in your vast experience of 25 years in MEP with different, you know, real estate firms, you must have seen the whole industry, you know, involving through different phases. Now, uh, talking about the current days, um, how are you creating a energy efficient building, energy sustainable building infrastructure, which is also resulting in, you know, overall well-being of the ecosystem? So you have seen the evolution. So what is happening now in current days, which is different? Yeah, thanks, Shweta. So Shweta, you know, First question is the energy efficient buildings, right? So, so what we understand that first of all, we have to have an ad data in our hand, right? So that based on the data, when we have, we can analyze and from that analyze what we found that the 50% of the building energy is consumption, energy consumption in only and only the air conditioning, right? So, which is one of the key factor where we can save energy, right? But how, how to save the energy? Because there are the few methods which we adopt. The first thing is that how to analyze. For analyzing what we adopted, the chiller optimization. Chiller plant manager, some people call it chiller plant manager, some call it the chiller optimizer. So, from that, it would decide the chiller optimizer itself, which chiller has to run? What is the total building demand? How to control this thing? How the chiller should run? Because uh, normally the P op uh, operators will run these build, uh, chillers. So in that case, what happens? They are running at the 80%, 90%, 100%. Or 100%. So how can we control all this thing? Because we don't know, the operator doesn't know, but there is an intelligent who is uh, you know, operating these things and based on the demand of the building, we can run all the pumps and everything because so that is the first thing which we adopt and we are putting all this, uh, you know, chiller optimizer in our buildings. The second, how to select the chillers because again, chiller again, the 50% loading is there only from these things. So now we select all these chiller in the high COP chillers. The first thing, VFD with the VFD base, THID less than 5%. So these are the key points which we found into the air conditioning. That is the main uh, where the 50% energy consumption is there, how we can improve all these things. That is the first thing. And then the second part is coming on the how we can improve in energy efficiency. We can make energy efficiency in the AHUs, right? Those are the client part. So now earlier, the people are using, you know, the centrifugal fans with the VFD. Now we are more ahead on the EC fans, electronic. So based on that, what we found that it's an almost when we go into this thing, ESP filter where in earlier uh, question I had mentioned, when we combine this EC fan with the e ESP filter, we save energy approximately 30% compared to the others. So that is a great, these things. And by high COP chillers and all these things, we are again controlling this uh, if you, 
you know, uh, these uh, energy efficient. That is the first thing which we, uh, two things which we had made into our uh, buildings, even in the retrofit, uh, you know, old building also where we are upgrading and new buildings are definitely with coming. Those are the key things which we are doing. And when we are talking about the sustainability, you know, so STP normally everywhere, there is the compliance. And we always found that these compliance are minimum which we have to do. But apart from that, we always far better than the compliance, which is the requirement of the health being and everything rather than the compliance. So that is the main key. Like we are using the HU, little, little things. Uh, for example, HU drains, we always try to reuse all this uh, what because those are the net uh, zero energy. So we have an commitment on these things. So we are doing. So these are the basic things in the energy game change. Which we are doing. So sure. Thank you. Thank you, Surinder. That was a good insight. Good insight. Um, yes, HVAC is the key guzzler of energy in any building for that matter. You know, any of the commercial building, be it a hotel or a healthcare facility or a uh, you know, office space, uh, HVAC is the guzzler and um, data driven insights is something which you are using to get more uh, insight of the places where you can improvise faster efficiency. The asset level is very key is what I understand. CPM or COP is something which you have been incorporating aggressively all across the facility, which is again based on the new technology uh, helping you um, uh, increase the efficiency of the whole system. Uh, okay. thank, thank you for that insight, uh, Surinder. Thanks. Now, I will move on to the next question. Um, uh, my next question is to you, Devan. Um, so, uh, Devan, you, you, you must have formulated and implemented many, um, you know, successful uh, growth strategies, business strategies. Now, uh, with that aspect, keeping in mind, my question is that uh, building occupants today are demanding uh, safe and future ready facilities. So today, in today's context, how are you bringing that competitive edge to your projects, to your space? And uh, does technology play, in, uh, play any role in that? Definitely. I think, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, construction industry, I think it's uh, it's always resisted any change or acceptance of technology so far. But I believe uh, with with the pandemic, uh, there has been a realization that you know technology is equally important. Uh, so innovative construction technology always enables uh, a massive improvement in safety, efficiency, and productivity of any project you can talk about. So you know after. Uh, after a huge construction boom, there was suddenly a, a stop on everything. So we've gone through three, literally three lockdown stages. Uh, and each project, we, we realized that it was very difficult. Uh, you know, the project suffered because of scarcity of manpower, scarcity of material available. So how can we mitigate that risk? So you know, th there are technologies available. I won't say that uh, we are using 100% of those, but yes, adoption of those technologies uh, is in progress. It's work in progress. And slowly, you know, we, we would move to that. So I think the, the major disruptions in technology, which in construction industry, I would start with say, augmented reality, you know, with, uh, with those smart devices, you have, uh, you know, the projects team uh, can actually address the issues with sort of automated measurements at sites, so visual, you know, uh, modifications. They can actually view it uh, on on their handheld devices and see what's what's going to happen, uh, not just referring to to the drawings. And it also provides the 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 safety information. Then we come to the most important factor, which it has always been neglected in India, which is safety, you know, at construction sites. So we always think that that's it's the least priority for anybody. So you know, with with the world moving towards, you know, uh, uh, the safe environment, how we can we can protect our our labor, our people at site. So we have to, you know, there there are 
uh, equipments available, PPEs, which are like smart boots, you know, with with the uh, you know uh, you know it can actually uh, they uh, have those uh, chip in that which can you know detect with the, they have sensors which can detect if there's any you know uh, obstruction. You have smart hats. You have you know uh, powered gloves, and then you know we also talking about how we because there is scarcity of labor how we can you know have a, a hybrid working condition so so far we've been talking about hybrid work in the offices but hybrid work would also happen at construction sites where some part of the work would be you know automated would be done by 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 the robots so we are looking at that we still as i said it's work in progress and uh, then we come to use of drones. You know, so far we've been doing uh, the land surveys which were manual and they were not accurate. So we're doing topographic surveys from drones. They're, they're accurate. They give you exact GPS locations, everything. You can track your equipment. You know, you have a lot of equipment at site. Those can be tracked. You don't have to have people running around and finding those. And then you can also, you know, make your sites safe if you use drones, uh, again, you, you're reducing the human intervention this. Now, the most important part is the artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, we spoke about it for the occupancy, but in the construction sites, you know, it helps people to make independent decisions. You don't have, without much of human input. Now, what uh, the machine learning would help us is in terms of based on the past experience, do an analysis and come up with, with a solution. So we don't have to you know, go through the, the invention wheel again and again. So it would help improve safety because you know, the software can analyze by just looking at the photograph, if there is a possibility of any safety hazard, it would decrease the cost because you are not redoing some work. Uh, and it would sort of, it, it would create a better design because you have all the data fed in. You will come up with the best possible design with uh, multiple permutations and combinations. I think uh, where we're heading now in terms of which uh, is picking up pace is modular construction. You know, off-site construction is something where uh, there's a lot of focus being done because, you know, you create something off-site, you, you have uh, an environment where it's safe for people to work and they do you bring that equipment to site and just just assemble it so it will you know it will de decrease the construction waste it will you know we talked about ESG sustainability lower emissions so carbon footprint is something which gets addressed and it's optimized by machine learning again you you have you know uh, the data which you can always refer to in terms of how you can improve a product. Then something which is, uh, again, a lot talked about is 3D printing. Uh, still evolving, uh, which would take some time, but I think it would be very efficient once we get to that stage. It's, it's like when LED came into place, it was very expensive. And then slowly with, with the mass use, the costs have come down, and I believe at some point of time, 3D printing would be something which will be used um, for for construction, uh, and it would increase the speed of the projects and eliminate all the errors because everything is fed in the machine. Now, what is being what's being followed, uh, which is in the industry, is BIM modeling. Uh, you know, we have before construction, during construction, and after construction, and you know, uh, but uh, Rajat, there he would agree to be that facility managers, after the site is handed over to them, they struggle with the uh, the information about the projects, and so do my fellow developers. So that's something which is very important because when we we are doing BIM modeling at at the start of the project, we put everything together, and you know there's if there's any conflict, we know it on the drawing board itself. We don't have to worry about the issues at site. So it eliminates all the issues and. You know, hence improves the efficiency. Uh, 
And then during the construction, you all the people have all the data available on, on one platform. So you don't have to run around for drawings and start matching those. And after construction, as I said, our FM uh, uh, friends would be very happy because they get everything in, uh, on one software. And then finally, I think blockchain is something which uh, so far has been implemented in cryptocurrency, but I think at, at some point of time in construction industry, it would be looked at where you have encrypted data, which is secured somewhere and it can be accessed. It, is, it can be decentralized. You don't have to put it one at one place. You have a decentralized uh, you know, dump of information and it's scalable. So I think these 10 uh, technological advancements I foresee would you know, uh, pick up pace in next decade or so. Very, very insightful, uh, Devan. In fact, um, you know, something new to me as well. In fact, uh, you know, we knew these are the technologies, but then how it is actually helping in the construction of the building is something I learned today. So uh, rightly said, um, um, real estate or the construction industry is being a slow adapter of technology, no doubts in that. But the technologies like AR, AI, and uh, you know, drone, machine learning is been evolving this uh, complete uh, construction. Modular construction is another bit which has come in and helping the safety aspect of the construction at the sites also. So, so thank you for that. And uh, we are actually on top of R. And this was my last question. So um, I'm not sure if we if we can run through all the questions, but before we get into that, uh, I will just quickly summarize um, um, you know today's session and some of the key takeaways for me, and I'm sure even for the audience from today's session is uh, we spoke about the safety and well-being and um, the health aspect in the commercial real estate. Um, Rajat spoke a very valid point saying that um, it's not only the employees. Yes, employees are more important, tenants are very important. It is also the health of the building, which is very, very important, and we need to focus there as well. So that's very important. Uh, I was very happy to hear the word eco structure from you, Rajat, being from Schneider. That really, you know, uh, gave me that smile. So thank you for that. We also spoke about um, the, the uh, air quality index, which needs to be maintained. That's one of the primary, primary thing when we talk about the health aspect in the office building. And we, there are different, and, uh, different ways and needs to do it. Technology is helping us out with that. There are ways by which we can optimize the chillers. We can, uh, we can have the AHUs running at the full, uh, AHUs uh, uh, functioning at the best possible way we have uh, different kinds of filters getting into the uh, facilities um on the on the next point which we spoke about um, uh, you know when we spoke about how ai and data driven uh, technologies are helping yes it is helping with respect to sustainability and efficiency very interesting from point from you shubhrat on tying up with startups which is accelerating the complete process of bringing in new technology for you. So that was great. Um, again, ESG, yes, data transparency is the key when we talk about the ESG aspects, the performance, the activities, the KPIs around it. We also spoke about, you know, HVAC being the biggest guzzler in the building environment and how do we optimize that part. So, so various means and ways. And lastly, um, the good insight, a huge insight, which I again repeat, um, um, technology playing its role in the construction industry, which is again, so, so important for the safety, from the safety aspect and from the efficiency aspect. So these are some of my, my takeaways as well. Um, with this, I thank you. Um, I thank you. Uh, I thank all the panelists, and um, it was a great discussion. And I will take just a minute to scroll through the questions because I know I was getting that beep of you know uh, lots of questions pouring in. And just a glance to it, I know um, you know again we are four minutes up. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I think I will take this question. Uh, you know, it's it's one of the very relevant topic in today's uh, scenario. 
Okay, so so this question, um, this question is to you, Rajat. Um, this question says it's on cybersecurity, by the way. It says uh, many systems and operations um, in the building are getting digitized, but it is also making our system more exposed and bringing um, along big threat and risk of attack on the whole system, cyber or physical attack. How is this sector and the occupants of this sector in India are handling this risk? So, I mean, it is marked to Rajat, but then uh, sure. anyone uh, thank else? You so much, Vedra. Yeah, I'll take a stab at this. Uh, I think uh, all of us have uh, a huge responsibility here, right? Uh, with digitization and IoT, you're obviously opening up avenues and doors into building data uh, for possible uh, malified intentions, right? So what we need to do, and I know that uh, Shubhit spoke about a number of partners and some of these partners we have partnered with as well. We take them through a very detailed assessment process where we do an assessment of how robust and resilient their own platform is uh, to malware or to um, basically intrusions by uh, potential uh, data thieves, right? So that's very, very important because the moment you start taking all of this data into the cloud, you're also opening up a gateway for data thieves to actually enter into the building and enter into the building systems as well, right? So for example, if I'm taking uh, building occupants or build, uh, building occupancy data, or I'm simply taking in uh, visitor data, or I'm tracking, for example, um, your CCTV data, uh, all of that is opening up uh, certain uh, vulnerabilities within that system. So it's important for us that whatever platform that we engage with, we take them through an assessment process. And in the cybersecurity domain, there are two or three tests which are run. They are standard tests, and then there are some very pointed tests as well to identify weaknesses in the in the system. So I think all of us owe it to our clients as well as to the buildings that we operate or we uh, project manage the construction or fit out of that any system that we latch on to a building automation system, for example, or which is an IoT based system, that system goes through the rigors of cybersecurity testing. And as these systems have opened up and evolved, the rigors of cybersecurity security testing will also increase. We, we often curse, uh, and you know, take this in a lighter way, we often curse the IT department for taking us through multiple hoops when we want to introduce the system into our buildings. But I'm telling you it's a blessing in disguise because it is opening up gateways. That's one aspect, right? So that means you're checking the robustness of the system itself. But one very important thing we tend to overlook is the compromise of safety which happens at a user level. And we've seen that happening in our buildings. For example, if I have a building at a automation system access provided to some users, if that user leaves the organization, he still has the access. Now, so therefore, updating user credentials, ensuring that the access protocols are clearly defined. That's very, very important. On systems such as building automation systems or systems such as any IoT system, if we use VGOT, for example, or use you know, uh, EcoStructure, we use Equilibrium. Uh, a lot of our uh, partners also use a number of other systems. It's important that we have the right administrative processes in place to ensure that access to that data is well monitored and the access of individuals or the user group is well monitored as well. So that means you need to continually update that access. If a user group is changing, if somebody exiting the user group, then we ensure that the password and login credentials are changed. And I know this may seem trivial, but it is super important because we have seen compromise of building systems just because of this aspect. The system itself is cybersecurity tested through three or four levels of testing against cyber attack. But if this level of access is compromised, then it leaves the entire building vulnerable to uh, to threat and mal malfied uh, intentions. Back to you, Shweta. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, uh, you know, uh, detailed answer and then very, very valid point how uh, cyber security is important for us, how, how um, you know, we are at risk when we talk about digitization, but then there are, uh, there are uh, precautions to be taken at each and every layer. Data comes with a risk 
we have to uh, be very mindful about it. So, so I do have um, at least you know ten questions I can see in front of me. Um, I will just quickly take one more question uh, because this is again I feel uh, very relevant in the today's scenario. So, uh, Surender, this is question mark to you. Uh, uh, it says, uh, with a large population of IT ITS still working from home, how is the sales and demand generation of commercial real estate slash office space moving? Okay. Uh, uh, question, uh, sorry, uh, your question is to how to? How is the, uh, yeah, so, so, so the question is, uh, 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 there is still large population which is working from home so really there is a demand being generated fresh demand being generated for the office space do you see yes, that yes definitely definitely even in the pre covid uh, pre uh, just third wave right there are a lot of interviews happening and even the lot, lot of care this is in a permanent this is uh, we can say the temporary kind of this thing ultimately people wants to go in the office and uh, you know they want to do the work and uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, doing the deals and everything. Our leasing team is working on that. And uh, we have a uh, lot of new buildings are coming up, uh, you know, projects are coming up and uh, we are getting. So it's uh, it's uh, it's kind of a new normal, definitely. But it depends on the people, you know, the tenants are kind of, they are very demanding. And that's, they're not, I would not say the demanding. I would say rather than it's the right because health being is must. Uh, is uh, one of the more important things and they are very earlier like as a fresh air and the mouth hurtings right these are the kind of thing these are the basic things now they they want right they want uh, you know these uh, how you are ensuring that the you know the things would be uh, new normal would be there and the comfort level would be there so uh, no, even the people are working from home. I think so. Now it is already started. People and uh, before this uh, third wave, even people are moving around thirty percent in our buildings. Okay. So, so thank you, thank you for that answer, yeah. Surender. So uh, that yeah. was a very positive sign. And uh, you know, commercial real estate office uh, real estate is here to stay for sure. Okay, that gives a very uh, good positivity. Yeah. So I will not take further question, but then uh, we will try to answer all the questions uh, to the audience uh, wherever the email ID is mentioned. We will reply back. Uh, you know, it's not possible but, to uh, just uh, in small. Uh, the, the other thing is we've also been uh, getting a lot of uh, questions in the side on the mails and WhatsApp also. So this is actually for you, and since you've been hosting. Since tonight has been hosting, uh, the a lot of questions came in for you. So just I'm going to quickly ask you this one question. Uh, the question goes uh, as uh, Schneider has been uh, as the front runner for digital technology. So they just want to know uh, how are you helping Indian commercial real estate market to evolve strongly? What are the new technologies that Schneider is bringing on its front per se as such? Okay. Okay. So uh, so you have put me on spotlight, uh, Rashmi. Okay, so when we talk about the digital solution, um, uh, when we talk about commercial real estate, a building environment, certainly Schneider is a front runner, I would say. Um, and there are lots of, uh, there are many multiple technology, like um, uh, we, we all know, um, you know, for, for people who are not very well versed with what Schneider does is Schneider is a energy management company. We are also into the automation part. So um, uh, we have something called uh, EcoStructure. It is basically a platform of all the Schneider offering um, on a platform which is very open, which is interoperable. And um, it is an architecture basically, uh, which has got three layers. EcoStructure is a digital platform which is actually transforming the electrical, mechanical, and in, in context with commercial real estate, it is also transforming the workplace domain. Okay. Now, uh, with EcoStructure, we have um, a layer, the base layer, which we call uh, IoT layer, which is mainly ensuring a very robust kind of digitization at the base level. So, all your hardwares, all your products, which are IoT enabled, which are communicable. So that's that's what Schneider brings a huge basket plethora of products at the base level, which creates the baseline of digitization. 
Uh, then we move on to the uh, second layer of ecostructure, which is something which we call edge, edge layer, edge control. So this is a pure digital layer, but we talk about on-prem softwares, on-premises software, which is uh, which is based on the technologies like um, uh, you know AI technologies, and we also talk spoke about the automation technologies, energy management system. So we have a gamut of softwares which are sitting on the base of the IoT enabled products. And then we have the third layer, which is very critical when we talk about digitization, be it building domain or industry domain or data center. The third layer, what um, Schneider brings in, which is again a software layer, but that's where the most of the intelligence part happens. We call it analytics. Um, analytics is again something which is cloud-based. It is again there are multiple platforms, but then this whole um, infrastructure, when we talk about it, works on various models. Digital in in context of building domain, since we are on that particular topic, um, a digital twin model is one of the key technology, the key model rather, which Schneider is using when it comes to the analytics or advisory part. Uh, apart from that, um, I think Schneider is very, very strong and very specialized when it comes to energy and sustainability services all across the world, all across the globe. We are supporting many corporates, big and small, throughout their journey of sustainability, helping them in achieving their uh, sustainability KPIs. Schneider itself has been rated by Knight Frank, uh, number one sustainable company globally so 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 these are the two things on digitization and again sustainability which i would say schneider is the front runner in this space yeah so i hope that answers the question uh, rashmi I, now, I, sure so now considering the time i would i would wrap up uh, today's session and uh, for the closing remark uh, i would pass it on to the board to you back to you well, then, uh, what do i say i devout every moment in norfolk and with such a battery of prolific speakers i would say and then this thank you to each one of you uh, i think the panel session has been one of the most insightful and not in the discussion i heard after a long long gap each of the panel shared some critical points in how data-driven insight is driving transformation and changing the future of real estate. We got to hear some of the top developers and CRE owners. How are they deploying technologies to upgrade their business? I think that's the need of the AI. It is imperative and for various reasons that we heard today. Sustainability, very close to our hearts. As a media company, I think I take a lot of pride and tell all my editors across the brands that we do, sustainability should be and really in the forefront. And I think we are taking a lot of initiatives truly as a media platform to disseminate this. And I'm sure with brands like Schneider, we are really in good hands, right? So I think sustainable another aspect that was stressed upon, and like the bit rightly mentioned, the first word today is ESG. It's no more just about just being sustainable. And last but not the least, a special and a very big thank you to Shweta from Schneider Electric for so beautifully di directing the whole discussion. If I may say that in Hindi, the real good sutradhar for this evening. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's a Friday evening, and but you know, I think we really devoured every session, and Shweta, you have really orchestrated the discussion so very well. I think we got every you know, insight from such learned men, you know, with all about, you know, somebody with two decades, 25 years, 30 years, I think so much to learn from them. And I, for one, is, is looking forward for more session. I think one hour, ladies and gentlemen, I think my watch is on one hour, 20 minutes, but I think it really gives me an opportunity that, you know, some point of time as Renji, as Subrata, as Rajat, as the Ben and everybody, I feel too very positive that we will hit on the grounds very soon. As you can see behind, a lot of gentlemen behind, you know, the frame, I can see all of them working from office. So it's very heartwarming to tell you. And on the floor, I keep telling my staff, you know, it's good time, positive times. And I hope, you know, we all get back and we get in a day long conversation. Like that's the, the genesis of this thing. So I think I would like once again to wrap, wrap it up. And ladies and gentlemen and people, uh, you know, been watching very patiently, uh, throwing many questions, but it's because of the positive of time, I'm sure, like Shweta said, we will reach back to you with our answers from our expert panel. And I think we would also bring about an incredible amount of 
you know, post-event coverage. You know, that the learning should go to the last mile. To all our FM friends who are listening, you know, we will make sure that commercial design and Rashmi, one of our very talented editor, will make sure that we are presenting you the whole, whole comprehensive coverage of this session. So I take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy weekend. Uh, stay safe, stay and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.